What if a well-intentioned plan to help the environment backfired in the worst possible way? How could millions of discarded tires, meant to save the ocean, become an ecological disaster? And what happens when nature fights back against human intervention? These are the haunting questions that have lingered for 50 years, as the truth about the Osborne Reef slowly emerged from the depths. Two million tires sunk beneath the waves, and a plan to save the ocean went terribly wrong. What began as a noble effort to protect and enhance marine ecosystems spiraled into a decades-long environmental catastrophe. It took half a century before the true extent of the disaster surfaced, and when it did, the revelations were nothing short of shocking. This is the gripping tale of the Osborne Reef, a well-meaning project turned into an underwater nightmare. Where good intentions met nature's unforgiving forces, the consequences were disastrous and the lessons learned continue to echo today. In 1972, just off the coast of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, an environmental experiment began that was supposed to tackle two pressing problems, waste management and marine habitat creation. The idea was innovative for its time, proposing to turn millions of discarded car tires into artificial reefs, hoping to mimic natural structures that attract marine life. On that clear morning, as the sun gleamed off the turquoise waters, Everything seemed perfect. The idea of merging human ingenuity with environmental preservation felt revolutionary. The plan was simple. Transform these old, unwanted tires into a sprawling underwater home for fish, coral, and countless other sea creatures. Little did they know this ambitious project would unravel into a cautionary tale that would haunt environmentalists for decades. The roar of boat engines shattered the serene ocean's surface as the first load of tires was ceremoniously dropped into the water. Standing proudly at the helm was Captain Mike Roberts, a passionate and hopeful advocate for the project. His face lit up with excitement, his heart swelling with pride as he watched his crew pour hundreds of tires into the depths below. This is going to be amazing, he shouted over the engine noise, his optimism contagious. He truly believed they were creating something extraordinary, a sanctuary for marine life, a marvel of modern environmentalism. But beneath the surface, an invisible chain of events was already set in motion. It was a disaster waiting to happen, one that would eventually span continents and generations. Captain Mike and his colleagues, a group of similarly optimistic environmental enthusiasts, thought they had hit upon a brilliant practical solution to two seemingly unrelated issues ocean habitat depletion and tire waste disposal. Old discarded tires were piling up on land, taking up space in landfills and becoming an eyesore. Meanwhile, marine ecosystems were under increasing pressure from human activity, pollution, and overfishing. Why not combine the two issues, they thought? Create an artificial reef from the tires. And voila, problem solved. The US government, eager to support innovative environmental solutions, granted permission for the Osborne Reef Project, marking it as a bold, forward-thinking initiative. No one could foresee how this well-intentioned plan would go so disastrously wrong. For months, the work continued. A steady stream of barges, retrofitted to carry massive loads of tires, plied the waters between the shore and the chosen site of the artificial reef. On board, sophisticated machinery hummed with efficiency. Cranes, conveyor belts, and divers worked in harmony to transport and carefully place the tires on the ocean floor. The crew, believing they were building a lasting structure, bound the tires together in tightly packed bundles using heavy-duty metal clips and rope. Tire by tire, bundle by bundle, they covered an area equivalent to 35 football fields, Convinced they were creating an enduring habitat for marine life, the Osborne Reef was born out of this monumental effort, and for a while it appeared to be a success. The water around the newly established reef was alive with activity, small fish darting in and out of the tire structures, and the tires themselves slowly becoming encrusted with a thin layer of green algae. It looked like the ocean had begun to embrace the new addition, and Captain Mike and his team were confident they had achieved something extraordinary. However, the honeymoon phase did not last long. As the months turned into years, what initially seemed like the birth of a vibrant underwater ecosystem revealed its darker side. 
The anticipated coral growth never materialized, and instead of fostering a bustling marine habitat, the Osborne Reef became a barren, eerie graveyard. The once orderly tire bundles began to break apart, the ropes frayed, and the metal clips corroded under the relentless power of the ocean's currents. The very forces of nature that the reef was supposed to harness and complement began to turn against it. What was once thought to be a refuge for marine life became an environmental dead zone, a sprawling wasteland of rubber, devoid of the life it was meant to sustain. By the 1990s, the first signs of the catastrophe began to emerge. Literally, tires started washing up on Florida's pristine beaches, carried by tides from the now crumbling Osborne Reef. Jenna Martinez, a 12-year-old girl walking along the beach with her family, was the first to make a startling discovery. Dad, look at this, she cried, holding up a tire covered in barnacles and seaweed. Little did she know, this single tire was just the beginning of a much larger problem. As the years went by, more and more tires washed ashore, littering the once picturesque coastline. The sight of hundreds of tires strewn across Florida's beaches shocked the local community, and questions began to arise about their origin. What had gone so terribly wrong beneath the waves? While the situation on land was troubling, the scene underwater was far worse. The loose tires, no longer bound together in the carefully constructed bundles, had turned into free-floating wrecking balls. With every ocean current, these tires slammed into fragile coral reefs, causing damage that took decades to grow. The ocean floor was transformed into an underwater junkyard, a scene more reminiscent of a post-apocalyptic wasteland than the vibrant marine haven that had been promised. Scientists who ventured down to inspect the damage were horrified. One researcher from the University of Miami described the site as a war zone, with tires scattered haphazardly, crushing marine habitats and even becoming entangled around the legs of sea turtles. The Osborne Reef, once a symbol of environmental hope, had become a dire warning about the unforeseen consequences of meddling with nature. By the early 2000s, it was clear that something had to be done. But how does one even begin to clean up two million tires from the ocean floor? The sheer scale of the task was daunting. The logistics seemed insurmountable. How could anyone remove such a massive quantity of tires without causing even more damage to the fragile marine environment? It would require unprecedented resources expertise, and time. For years, the problem festered with no clear solution in sight. That was until in 2007, a glimmer of hope finally emerged. Coastal America, a small federal office, stepped in with a bold plan to turn the cleanup into a training exercise for the military. This marked the beginning of what would become a massive decades-long effort to right the wrongs of the past. Underwater Army Diver. Jason Jakovenko led his team into the depths, retrieving tire after tire in a painstakingly slow process. It's like trying to clean up a landfill underwater, Jakovenko remarked during one of his many dives. Despite the enormous challenges, his team managed to retrieve around 1,000 tires a day. The work was grueling, dangerous, and often frustrating. Strong ocean currents made the task even more perilous while visibility underwater was often limited to just a few feet. Yet the team persevered, driven by the knowledge that every tire they brought to the surface represented one less threat to the fragile marine ecosystem. Slowly but surely, the cleanup operation began to make headway, though it was clear that this was just the beginning of a monumental task. As word of the cleanup spread, it inspired a wave of grassroots involvement, environmental groups, local dive shops, and concerned citizens rallied to the cause. Certified recreational divers volunteered their weekends to assist in the cleanup under professional supervision. These community-driven efforts provided much-needed manpower to the operation, but more importantly, they raised awareness of the dire state of marine conservation. Many volunteers found a new sense of purpose and connection to the ocean, reporting feelings of fulfillment as they removed tire after tire from the ocean floor. The cleanup had become more than just an environmental necessity. It was now a symbol of collective responsibility and environmental stewardship. Despite the progress made, it became clear that volunteer efforts alone would not be enough to tackle the enormity of the problem. 
In 2015, the Florida Department of Environmental Protection stepped in, allocating $1.6 million to fund a professional cleanup operation. The Industrial Divers Corporation was hired to take on the task, with a projected timeline of over two years to remove as many tires as possible. These professional divers, tethered to barges and equipped with advanced tools, work tirelessly to recover the tires from the ocean floor. It's like underwater archaeology, remarked Maria Gonzalez, the lead diver for the project. We're uncovering the mistakes of the past, but we're also witnessing how resilient nature can be. In some areas, signs of life were beginning to return, with new coral colonies slowly establishing themselves among the tires. Though the cleanup was far from over, there was hope that the ocean could heal. As the cleanup gained momentum, Captain Mike Roberts, now in his 80s, could no longer ignore the weight of his past actions. Haunted by guilt for his role in the tire dumping project, Mike was determined to make amends. Despite his advanced age, he approached the cleanup team with an offer they couldn't refuse. His intimate knowledge of the waters could help map out the worst affected areas. Initially, the team was skeptical. Could this elderly man, once responsible for the disaster, now contribute to its solution? But as they began working with him, it became clear that Mike's insights were invaluable. His decades of experience on these waters allowed him to pinpoint hidden clusters of tires and navigate dangerous underwater currents.